Request your free offer today. News 6 at 9. Here's your 58. Good morning on this Friday. Here are your big stories on News 6 at 9 in less than a minute. We're looking at rain off and on today. We'll be pinpointing when you can see storms down in your neighborhood. Plus, will it all clear up for the weekend? And driving change, the Senate approved an amended texting and driving bill. Now it's back to the House. What does it all mean for you? We'll break it down. Then he calls himself a contractor. Others call him a crook. News 6's Lewis Bolton investigates how people tell us one guy is taking people's money, then running away without doing any work. Plus, protecting our children and backseat passengers. How one organization is working to get results and boost the safety. And getting results for cancer patients, how you can help them get to their treatments and doctor visits, and how you can get that same help if you need it. We'll show you how coming up this hour. Those are our big stories. News 6 at 9 starts in three minutes. Stay with us. Live from News 6 and ClickOrlando.com, this is News 6 at 9. Good morning, I'm Bridget Ellison. It is finally Friday. We're so happy you're with us. I'm Julie Broughton. And I'm Candace Campos. It is a slight of a gl uh, gloomy start to our yeah. Friday, but it should shape up to look very nice as we head into the weekend. But we have a really a lot of great stories to talk about. I love some feel good stories on a Friday. And we always talk about donations, organ donations, and how social media has really blown up this this world of asking people for organ donations and we actually have a new six viewer who contacted Matt Austin she nominated for getting results award her organ donator uh, and it's just amazing how social media can really open your world to so many mm -hmm. options so uh, we'll get her story coming up in a couple minutes but certainly a feel-good story if you need one on a Friday yeah. yes it is and of course this week was one of our favorite holidays one of my favorite holidays take your child to work day <laughs> that was actually yesterday so my daughter Isla came along to work with me and we said well you actually have to work yeah so she worked with the web team yesterday and she put together a guide for if you're thinking about buying a chinchilla here are some things you need to know I will tell you you need to know a lot of things so she worked with Brie on this so Brie Vols mm -hmm. from ClickOrlando.com will be here just a little bit later to give us some thoughts on what we need to know about if you're thinking about adding some rodents to your family. I cannot <laughs> wait for all the cuteness on that they one. Are really they cute. are really cute. Yeah. So is Isla. <laughs> Thank also, you. Also this morning, you know, big progress in driving change. Yesterday, the Florida Senate approved an amended bill from the House, and so now it has to go back to the House for another vote, but we're making progress here. Also here today, Mark Jenkins from AAA to talk to us about you know, how these implications will play out on the roads and some of the things AAA is doing to drive change as well and keep us safer. So we'll get to that in a bit. But first, though, this weather showers moving across central Florida. And Candace, you've been pinpointing that heavy rain throughout the morning, and this is really going to be a wet Friday for it us. It is. It's going to be a bit soggy. It's not going to be as strong to severe as we were dealing with a week ago today, but certainly some rain on the radar. So let's take it to the weather graphics, give you a quick idea of what's going on. It's the same front that's been bringing a lot of strong, very very severe storms through Texas, parts of Louisiana, and this will continue to make its way. And you can see here's the main line right now making its way through Marion County, Lake and Sumter. For our southern zones, you guys will be seeing some of that rain in just a few hours. So let's talk about the radar. Really trying to pinpoint here. Not a lot of lightning, so that's certainly some good news. Beneficial rain as we are still technically in the dry season. You can see some moderate showers now falling through parts of uh, Lake and Sumter County. We're talking 75 through Lake Penisofke, through Leesburg, down through the Florida Turnpike, some moderate rain totals. Uh, we're talking about an inch, about an inch and a half per hour falling. The good news is, is this is moving very quickly. So very cloudy skies, some scattered showers, more light rain stretching out through Zellwood, Apopka, Mount Plymouth as well. And then we were just watching a nice heavy band through Port Orange and New Smyrna Beach that has all now pushed offshore. And then again to our farther south, some light misty rain through the Orlando area and further south through Osceola and Melbourne. You're not seeing any rain just yet but you will in a, just a couple hours. I'll be pinpointing more of this exactly how it shapes up for your weekend coming up in just a couple minutes. And again, we are talking about the possibility of seeing some strong storms, but nothing severe, at least in the forecast for today. All right, Candace. Now to the positive progress in our push to toughen up distracted driving laws in Florida. Yesterday, the state Senate approved its version of a distracted driving bill. The proposal includes some amendments to the House bill, including banning drivers from having a phone in their hands while driving in school and construction zones. This means officers now can pull you over if you're texting behind the wheel. 
And now a House floor vote is expected on Monday. And until then, the awareness continues. Distractions continue to be a growing danger on our roads in this month. AAA is actually reaching out to drivers of all ages, asking them to put those down, those phones down. Joining us this morning, AAA spokesperson Mark Jenkins. Mark, so good to see you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Great to be here. And I know this is something AAA has been working on for the past decade, really right. urging people to put down their phones. What was your reaction as you were following all of this? No, I mean, it's great news because this is something, like you said, that we've been working on for so long. We certainly commend uh, News 6 for all the work you all have been doing. So, you know, fingers crossed we could see something come to fruition as early next week. That would be great. And I mean, we obviously have the new six driving change initiative. I mean, you were, we've been watching this since 2016. It's been yeah. such a long progress. I mean, have you seen things kind of, uh, I guess the laws have kind of lax a little bit as the update from yesterday. How do, you, how do you feel about that, that it's not going to be hands-free everywhere? Well, it's a great first step because ultimately, you know, hands-free even in itself is not risk-free. We've done a lot of research on mm -hmm. this subject and found that even when using hands-free technology, your mind is still distracted and those distractions can linger for up to 27 seconds. So if you're driving at about 25 miles per hour, that amount of time you can cross three football fields without fully being engaged in what's going on. But even still, texting while driving, just that act alone can increase your odds of getting into a crash eight times the amount. So it, it really is dangerous. And you've been studying these numbers for a while now, and they're staggering when we look at just the increase in the number of crashes and those related to the distractions. Yeah, I mean, about 3,000 deaths nationwide are blamed on distracted driving, and about 51,000 crashes just in Florida alone are blamed on distracted driving. Texting while driving is obviously a big component of that. So, you know, we're just advocating that there are tougher and more comprehensive laws on distracted driving, and having this be a primary offense for texting while driving does give authorities that option to pull people over if they notice that they are texting while driving. So it's, it's a great first step. And how are you reaching out to your members, and, you know, how, what have you been doing to urge them, like, hey, this is something that, this can save lives. Put down your phone, and as you mentioned, hands-free is not necessarily just distraction free. Yeah, I mean, we've been reaching out in a variety of different ways, whether it's sending out brochures, uh, emails, but also just communicating through the media and other channels, just talking to them about the dangers of distracted driving. And one thing that we're actually doing right now is urging people to go to our website and take the pledge to drive distraction free. If they do that and they are a AAA member, they can actually get a discount on their next rental with Hertz. So that's certainly a great benefit right there. And all you have to do is go to AAA.com. But that's just one of the many reasons and many ways yeah. that we're trying to engage people and try to get the phone out of their hand. Because as you know, you know, with the way that the world is going right now, mm -hmm. everyone pretty much has that phone in their hand, whether they're driving or not. Yeah, yeah. it's like stuck It's like stuck in our hands, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. And Florida is not the leader in this movement. I mean, we're kind of behind when you think of all these other states. I mean, how have you seen other states and their, their tough laws compared to Florida? Well, I, I think that, you know, when you're looking at other states and what they're doing, it's just really something that you, you look at the successes that they have and you just try to mirror that and you just mm -hmm. try to say, hey, listen, there are other states that are leading the charge. We need to be following. We need to be keeping pace with that. And I think that this legislation that's on the table is a great step in doing that. And you, you have, have an a event. big, oh, well, yes, yeah, a big yeah, event coming yeah. up this weekend. We're excited about it. Yeah. So Yeah, we're excited about it, too. Um, it's something that we're doing over at the big Heathrow building, the big mm -hmm. AAA mm -hmm. national headquarters. If you've been down I-4 lately, or in the past, what, decade or more. <laughs> yeah. You've seen it. It's huge. Um, we're, so we're having a big car show there on Saturday. Mm. You know, AAA, it's the American Automobile Association. So automobile is a big component of what we do here and have been doing for more than a century now. We're encouraging anyone who is a car enthusiast, if you have a show car, if you have a regular fixer-upper, bring it down. Put it on display. We love to see it. And we're encouraging the whole family to come out. It's free of charge. You don't have to be a AAA member to use it. And somebody there will win a free cruise. With Royal nice. Caribbean, it's a two day, it's a two person cruise. Yes. So come on out, enter to win. It's going to be a great opportunity. I think I'll let people check out my dirty mom mobile. <laughs> yeah. See, like this is real life. <laughs> real, real hot hot man. Man. <laughs> yes. So we'll do that. On people will be impressed. I'm yes. sure. Yes. Thank you so much, All Mark. Right. Thank you. Well, thank you. And speaking of closed cars, let's check it. The traffic now with traffic safety expert True Perceive with Pinpoint Traffic brought to you by Napleton Automotive. We don't want to get those nice show cars in a crash. Uh, I'll be leaving my, my girl at home, <laughs> uh, not driving on I-4 this weekend. But as of right now, 528 via Flora, things up to speed this morning. You can see 
Some of those clouds Candace and Troy have been talking about this morning starting to come through the central Florida area at least, but we are crash free along 528 right off of 528 though over at Sand Lake Road and Orange Avenue right at the intersection. You see the north and southbound slowdowns there. That crash has been cleared, so just give it a second and things will be back up to speed in that area. Weatherby and Boggy Creek Road, the right lane was blocked there. That also has been cleared out. So any progress, you know what I'm going to say, is good progress. So northbound Turnpike, all clear right around 417. You would think today is a holiday, but if it's your Friday off, good for you because traffic is not too bad. And some of those, that was weather clouds starting to move in along the east portions of I-4. So be careful this morning and increase that driving distance throughout the remainder of the day. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Trooper Steve. He calls himself a contractor, but buyer beware. Police say the same man has been arrested before. Police say he has run off with thousands of dollars and not delivered on promises. And investigator Lewis Bolden spoke to one couple who are concerned they, that he may strike again. We wanted to turn this basically into an efficiency. When Greg Weaver and Susan Paluzzo decided to enclose their back porch and add a room to their home, they interviewed numerous contractors first. He really walked the walk and talked the talk. In January of last year, the couple hired Michael Martire with CNM Home Repair. They signed a proposal outlining the scope of the work and the price. $3,000 with $1,300 paid in cash up front for materials. We were just kind of in a little bit of a crunch time, mm -hmm. so we just went with it. Work was to start immediately, but when two weeks passed and nothing had been done, they believed they'd been duped. Well, when it first happened, I was so upset because that was, it was just a very financial hardship for us. The couple filed a report with the Holly Hill Police Department and Martire was eventually arrested. It turns out it wasn't his first time. We end up getting a very good con artist. News 6 investigated and found CNM Home Repair has no business license with the state of Florida and Martire is not a licensed contractor. In fact, his criminal history goes back to 2002, the first time the state attorney brought criminal charges against him for operating as a contractor without a license. He was ordered to pay a fine. In 2003, a couple sued him for breach of contract after they paid him more than $40,000 for a renovation he never completed. In that case, he was ordered to pay restitution. Since then, New Six has found over the years, Martire has been sued multiple times and faced criminal charges on several occasions for writing worthless checks, grand theft, and operating without a license, according to court records. They need to do something with him. He can't keep being allowed to do this to everybody. It's just ridiculous. When Martire was arrested in Weaver's case in 2018, News 6 found he was already on probation after being convicted in two other cases in 2017. Court records show a judge found him guilty of grand theft in Flagler County after taking a deposit for an air conditioning repair he never made. And he was found guilty of grand theft in Volusia County for taking a deposit to build a fence he never started. This gentleman keeps getting away with it. He'll be out on bail and and he'll be trying to get more work from other victims. Since Martire is currently out on bond, they fear it could be happening again. He's a professional con artist and he's not going to stop unless he gets put away in jail. Martire is awaiting trial for the latest case. Paluzzo and Weaver say he told them he is a licensed contractor. If you need to verify if someone actually has a license, you can go to the Department of Business and Professional Regulation website. We'll put a link to it along with this story on clickorlando.com. Getting results, I'm Lewis Bolden, News 6. Makes your blood boil, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Well, every day, thousands of cancer patients are getting treatment to fight their illness. Transportation is a key to cancer care. Many patients are in need of a ride. Maybe you have a few hours in the morning. Uh, whatever you can do, it'd be such a help to these people. And the road to recovery is in need of volunteers. How you can get results next. You're watching News 6, getting results. We'll be right back. This portion of the news is brought to you by the Orlando Solar Bears. Bloods tonight. Live, getting results with Bridget Ellison, Julie Broughton, meteorologist Candace Campos, and traffic safety expert Trooper Steve. This is News 6 at 9. 
Battling cancer is so hard for many reasons. Not only are you ill, but you have to find ways to get to your treatments and doctor visits. And sometimes getting to those appointments can be such a challenge because you might not even have someone to take them. Yeah, it's hard, and that's where the American Cancer Society gets results through their Road to Recovery program, but the organization is in need of more volunteer drivers. News 6 at 9's Carolina Cardona explains how you can help. It's meant a lot to me because it gave me the opportunity to help people. People with cancer who need daily or weekly treatments, sometimes spanning several months. If people aren't able to get to their treatments, that's a big reason why people don't get their treatments. That's where Frances Grossi is getting results. Two to three times a week, she drives patients to make sure they don't miss their critical appointments. I thought, that's for me. I wanted to do something more personal with the patients. About 10 years ago, she came across American Cancer Society's Road to Recovery program, a free service for patients who don't have a vehicle or don't have anyone to drive them. The whole purpose of Road to Recovery is to have that one-on-one -on -one personal service with the patient. Fran, for instance, drives to Tampa to Moffitt quite a bit. She has a couple of patients that she's been driving for several years, back and forth. What's really great about the way it works now is the driver has the opportunity to choose how far they want to drive, how often they want to drive, what days they want to drive. But the organization has hit a small bump in the road. They're in need of more drivers so that they can continue to get results for cancer patients in Central Florida. As the treatments are growing and growing with the medical advances that are happening, outpatient treatment is the way that we're progressing. The more drivers we have, the more likely we are to be able to fill the rides for the patients that we have. Rides are primarily Monday through Saturday. Drivers interested in being part of the program must have a valid driver's license, proof of insurance, and also a fully operational vehicle. They must also go through a screening process. And of course, they have to have a good driving record. Maybe you have a few hours in the morning. Uh, whatever you can do, it'd be such a help to these people, and they appreciate it so much. For Fran, it's been a rewarding journey that comes with some perks. It's been a wonderful opportunity. I've met so many wonderful people. I've made some very close friends. I see a lot of Florida that I haven't seen. I take rides in a lot of areas I've never been to. Carolina Cardona, News 6 at 9. And once again, if you are a patient, that service is free. So, I mean, that's just incredible. Yeah, and it's, it's amazing to think that, you know, just a simple, you know, couple hours a day mm -hmm. helping someone out could really make a difference in their battle. And I like how she said it's really personal. You know, you're just not handing in some money. You're actually getting to know these, you know, know these people and, and drive them sometimes for more than an hour. I mean, taking them out to Tampa, it's not around the corner. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, I mean, it's so powerful. And it's amazing how people can, can get results in whatever, whatever yeah. way they can. Yeah, and if you're interested in volunteering, you do have to take an online course. And we, of mm -hmm. course, have all that information for you on ClickOrlando.com. All right, so today's not the best day for some driving just because we are dealing with some rain. That brings us to our meme of the day. You know what we're known for, the Sunshine State, but uh, not today. Mm -hmm. So the Sunshine State needs to be on the uh, quotations. It'll be back exactly. tomorrow. Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, it will be. All right, and let's check out our viewer submission. Meteorologist Samara Coquino is always sending us beautiful sunsets, usually on her evening runs. I think she does lots of running, Gorgeous. lots of picture taking. Yeah, very pretty. And we are going to see a nice sunset, sunset later on tonight, but we've got to get all this cloud cover and rain out the way. We're watching a strong front that's going to be pushing through. It's really not going to be packing much of a punch behind it. Not much of a cool down. Temperatures will be going back to the mid 80s, but overall we're not expecting anything very cold. So keep the sweaters at home this weekend. Let's look at the radar right now. We are talking about some beneficial rain falling across portions of central Florida from the villages out through Okahomka, Lake Panasofsky, Leesburg, Center Hill, Groveland. Also seeing some moderate rain. That moderate rain stretches up through the northern areas, Bellevue up through 75 into the Ocala area. Also seeing some moderate rain. Some light showers through Deland down I-4. Sam Sula, New Smyrna Beach are also dealing with some light to moderate rain. Some pockets of some moderate rain now falling through parts of Seminole and Orange County. Some uh, light showers through Orlando, Pine Hills, and Windermere, as well as through Sanford up and down I-4. So just take a slow out there. Areas further south, 
basically Osceola and Brevard. You guys haven't seen much of the rain, but that front has somewhere to go and it will be heading further south over the next couple of hours. Right now, though, things aren't warming up too quickly because of all that cloud cover and rain cooled air mid 70s. And as we go throughout the day, off and on rain, rain coverage will stay up to about 60% off and on throughout the afternoon. Highest day in the mid 80s and we will stay in the mid 80s through Saturday. Beautiful weekends in store. It is going to be a warm one, especially as we head into Sunday nearing 90 degrees and that's where we'll stay. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and even into Thursday, mostly dry, but downright hot. So if you ask me, Saturday will be the best day just because it will be a little cooler. Yeah. But both days are looking great. So ready for the mm -hmm. weekend. Yes. Well, car manufacturers have done a lot to improve safety of front seat occupants. And according to new data, you are more likely to survive a car crash if you're riding up front. That is interesting, but now that study is suggesting car makers can do more to protect back seat passengers. In minutes, what experts say needs to change. Efforts to improve backseat safety are about to get a boost from the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety. The organization is encouraging car manufacturers to make improvements to protect backseat passengers from serious injury during a crash. Chris Martinez reports from Los Angeles. Seven people, including five children, were killed when a truck crashed through a barrier and slammed into a church van on its way to Disney World earlier this year in Florida. Despite wearing seatbelts, three people were ejected. Sometimes, you know, seatbelts are not designed to take and withstand that type of of a vehicle being torn apart. But a new study from the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety shows car manufacturers can protect rear seat passengers by adding two simple features. We're looking to work with automakers to have them take the technology that they've already put in the front seat with regards to pre-crash tensioners and load limiters and put those in the rear seat. Researchers believe the technology could help keep passengers tighter to the seat. And while side airbags can prevent injury, the IIHS is encouraging automakers put front airbags in the back seat as well. As more people ditch driving for ride sharing services, the study shows the addition of these sophisticated restraint systems in cars could save lives. So using Lyft, using Uber, for example, we think we're going to have more people riding in the rear seats of vehicles in the future, and therefore it's important to start to address this problem now. Harkey says rear seat passengers are killed in about 10% of all fatal crashes. Chris Martinez, CBS News, Los Angeles. You normally think the back seat is the safer spot, and I now know. you're a little worried Such about that. Yeah, especially with the car seats. Mm -hmm. Well, you guys remember Julie's daughter Isla <laughs> showed off some spots around Central <laughs> Florida for us here on News 6 and 9 last summer. Yeah, busy. but when school started getting in the way in the <laughs> fall, she had a little less time to hang out with us at the station. And of course, we've missed her dearly. But yesterday was Take Your Child to Work Day, so of course, you know, she wanted to get in on that. But this time, <laughs> she wasn't as interested in what we do. She wanted to spend the day with Bree and the rest of the ClickOrlando.com team. She is my BFF, and I was trying to give you the day off, Julie. Thank you. But not, you're welcome, not Isla. We put her right to work. In fact, <laughs> our resident rodent expert put together something I'm sure we're all going to find very useful, a guide to owning chinchillas. So this isn't your first article on ClickOrlando.com, but it is your most recent. And why are you here today? Because today's Take Your Child to Work Day. Right, and you really run the show around here. I know. So you worked with your mom, Julie, I did. to do this, and tell me what the story is about. This story is about, so I have two pet chinchillas, mm -hmm. and I just have a little owner's guide on clickorlando.com slash pets. And why did you put this together? Because I it's tough. I love chinchillas, and it's tough. It's really tough having one. And there's a lot of stuff you probably didn't know about yes. chinchillas before. So absolutely. you've got this full guide and we'll go through it. What are some of the things we talk about? So we're going to talk about how they bathe. They cannot have water and how they can get diseases from mm. tap water and how they're going instinct because their hunters are killing them for their fur. Oh, that's very sad. And then one interesting thing that you have down here. Yes. What's in this video? Um, a dust bath? Yeah, what everyone wants to see. Chinchillas are cool because they take dust baths, right? Yeah. So if you want to see the full guide and watch the dust bath, where yes. can you go? You can go to clickorlando.com slash pets. 
<laughs> she knows the best website. She put <laughs> so much heart into that story because if you didn't hear her say it, it was inspired by her chinchillas, Anastasia and Fantasia. It's <laughs> super informative and our whole team was actually super surprised by how much goes into caring for them. Julie, you had no idea they were going to be such delicate creatures. Well, you know what? We researched a lot before we got them yeah. and that's super important because it's not like getting, you know, a hamster that lives a year or two. These things yeah. can live 15 to 20 years. So I always You're tell invested. her, yes, that I will be <laughs> helping these little creatures take dust baths while she's off in college and married and I'm going to be sitting in a town home with mm. these elderly rodents by then. They're chin children. Yes, and they children. are. And children. Like, they are. They are. like a pregnancy waiting yes. for them to be big enough to come home. <laughs> yes, yeah. it was a lot. I mean, they're super social. Mm -hmm. They're great pets, but there is just a lot that goes into taking care of them properly. Well, she did a great job on that story. And my favorite part is the byline says, Julie Broughton and Isla. Yes. And Isla. <laughs> and Isla. Yes. She is awesome. She worked very hard, and we're happy to have her back anytime she yes. wants to come. Yes. Well, so if you need that guide, like she said, clickrolando.com slash pet. Thank you. And thank you for hosting her in the web pod all day. Anytime. She is such a favorite. <laughs> Everyone lights up when we see her yeah, in the newsroom. Well, for 49 days, the One Orlando Alliance is encouraging acts of love and kindness all around Central Florida. And it's all to pay respect to the lives lost in the Pulse shooting. Up next, we'll talk about the movement in a live interview and how you can get results. You're watching News 6 at 9, getting results. We'll be right back. Live, getting results. This is News 6 at 9. Orlando United Day is June 12th, the same day 49 lives were taken at the Pulse nightclub almost three years ago. It's a day of love and kindness, but the mission is more than just one day. And the hometown movement is inspiring Central Florida and beyond to spread love and kindness by supporting those in need. And this year, the movement began yesterday, 49 days in advance of June 12, to honor those 49 souls. Here now to tell us more about this year's Acts of Love and Kindness campaign, Jennifer Foster, Executive Director at the One Orlando Alliance. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. And what a beautiful idea to start 49 days in advance of June 12. Tell us how this all came about, this idea. Sure, leading up to 2017, when we were coming up on the one year uh, marker of the tragedy, we worked with the city and the county to figure out what could really be a respectful way that we could honor those that were taken and really give back and show the love and generosity that was shown to our community back in June 12, 2016. I'm sure you all remember mm -hmm. just the outpouring of love that we all received. So what was a really great way that we could just continue that year after year? And so we came up with the Acts of Love and Kindness movement along with the city and the county and we roll that out every year 49 days in advance to honor the victims of the tragedy and also all of the people that are still processing the trauma that affected our community this year we have a particular focus on mental health we really want people to know that it's okay to mm -hmm. talk about whatever feelings may come up around the tragedy um, and to, to seek help and um, really raise some awareness around funding for the people that were most affected the, the you know the victims family members and the survivors and first responders and just anybody in our community that really w was working daily processing that trauma that happened. Um, you know, there's still needs that go on in our community that we need to address. And, and so seen there's a focus here. A great response over the past few years. You've had over 5,000 volunteers, more than 10,000 hours, volunteer yeah. hours. What are some of those ways we can get involved? What types of varieties of things are you seeing people do? Yeah, it's really incredible, the outpouring of love and support from our community and all facets of our community. I mean, we have people donating uh, their time and their, their money and you know their resources and their talents towards this movement. Um, people can get involved by volunteering at one of our community service organizations. Lots of our organizations mm -hmm. have great volunteer opportunities for people to, get, to engage. They can do something simple like just helping a stranger, you know, picking mm -hmm. up trash on the street. I mean, anything that you're doing to show kindness and love and generosity to someone else in our our community is a way of contributing to uh, to this movement. Um, we have these, you know, the, the love part is really about social media. It's about mm -hmm. just, you know, sh spreading the love on social media. You know, when you put kindness out there, that love just reverberates. Mm -hmm. And so what better way than to utilize social media? I heard you talking about that earlier. Um, and, uh, you know, we have these act I act because, I love because, I give because signs. I brought you each one that you oh, all okay. can, Thank can you. fill Thank out. You. Yeah, and we and were looking at pictures on the screen when mm -hmm. we were talking about people yeah. holding them up with the hashtag act love 
Act, love, give, yes. Yes. I read for a living, but I was like, what does that say? (laughs) Yeah, I mean, it's a really simple way, right? Mm -hmm. It's just, what is your personal expression? How do you act? How do you love? How do you give? How do you care about our community? Mm -hmm. Take a picture, put it on social media. You know, something simple like that just helps to build to the movement and the momentum. And I think sometimes we take for granted those little things that we do on a daily basis that contribute to who we are as a community. Uh, But that's really what connects us all. Right, and those little things can help with the healing overall. And our community is still healing. It will never be the same. I mean, this is an ongoing process for all of us. That's right. That's right. And especially, you know, the mental health focus that we're shifting towards Mm -hmm. this year is to remind people of that. We are still healing, and it's okay to say that. It's You know, we experience just a devastating tragedy in our community. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to feel that and to seek help when we need to. And there's great places like the Orlando United Assistance Center that is there to offer that support. Mm -hmm. Um, Certainly our LGBTQ community was very influenced and impacted by the tragedy. The OUAC has been there for our community, but it's really open to all in Central Florida who need the support. Right, and there are free counseling opportunities. Absolutely. So tell folks if somebody's at home watching, and I know as we approach that three-year mark now, you know, when you get closer to that date of June 12th, it really brings up all those feelings again, that's maybe right. that may have been dormant as you're distracted throughout the year. That's right. And that's why we're supporting the Orlando United Assistance Center. And you can go to, to Orlando United Assistance Center, um, dot, dot org to get more information about that. Um, you can call 211. You know, there are a lot of resources in our community that are there to help this, the Mental uh, Health Association of Central Florida. Um, to Spirit Healthcare, there's a lot of services in our community that are that are there to support mental health needs. Um, unfortunately, Florida is last in the nation uh, for wow. mental health funding, and so that's something that we need to work on from a policy standpoint and make sure that you know the funding continues to come in to support uh, those that are struggling in all aspects, not just this tragedy, but yeah. you know mental health crisis uh, in Central Florida and in, in this country really needs to be elevated. And so talking about is one way that we can do that. Jennifer, we thank you. And, 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 you know, I know it's 49 days to honor those lives lost. I think it needs to be year-round. Absolutely. I mean, why not? Well, and that's what's beautiful about this movement, right? It's yeah. not a campaign. It's not just for 49 days. Right. It's something yeah. that we really, I think, live and embrace here in Central Florida. Mm-hmm. And we want to spread that message and encourage others to do that, too, not just today but every day. And yeah. hashtag it, act, love, give. Pretty easy. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks yeah. for having me. Well, here's a happy update where no words are really necessary. We'll just show you. UCF quarterback Mackenzie Milton walking without crutches. UCF football shared the video of Milton with the caption, one step at a time. And you you know, Milton suffered that season ending knee injury last season and he spent weeks in the hospital. He's had five surgeries. It's a long road to recovery. He told us in an interview last month, he is planning to play again. And that determination definitely shows. The whole community is just behind him. Yes. Goosebumps when you see that, yes. right? Okay. Well, it's no secret. If you want to get the word out about something, you post it on Facebook. <laughs> For a Lake County woman, her urgent message, though, got some likes and shares. More importantly, she was able to get her life back. Of course, my first question to him was, why, why what made you decide to do this? Why not? <laughs> Wow. Mm. These two are more than just Facebook friends now after a kidney transplant. This story next. You're watching News 6 getting results. We'll be right back. This portion of the news is brought to you by Bush Gardens Food and Wine Festival. Morgan & Morgan. Live getting results with Bridget Ellison, Julie Broughton, meteorologist Candace Campos, and traffic safety expert Trooper Steve. This is News 6 at 9. Well, April is Organ Donation Month. Last year, nearly 28,000 lives were saved thanks to the generosity of others. And one News 6 viewer counts herself among them. She wrote News 6 anchor Matt Austin to explain how her social media circle was bigger than she ever imagined. And someone she never met answered her post on Facebook and her prayers. Well, you know, I just kind of look to see what people are saying and stuff. You would not call Vicki Pentecost a social media influencer. I'm what you call a voyeur. (laughs) Recipes. It's just fun. Close friends and sewing groups make up her feed. Anything that's easy. But when she hit post in 2017. Facebook friends, if you could pass this on, I would so appreciate it. Her words were written with purpose. I have stage five renal failure. In order to stay alive, I have to do dialysis every 
every day. After fighting I kidney disease, kidney. she needed more than likes and shares. Yeah. She um, needed a transplant. I, I, I am 60 years young. Thank you in advance and may God bless you. What she didn't know then was the power of social media wow. was about to change her life. That still gets me every time. <laughs> and the message on that mm. tiny screen would provide a second says, chance. My wife, she went to school in high school with uh, Harmony, Vicky's daughter. Mm -hmm. And someone and she's never met school. would answer her prayers. Of course, my first question to him was, why, why, what made you decide to do this? Why not? Why not? I don't, I don't live For Art life. Foles, it was that it's simple. Right. I did not know him. It was easy as that. I did not, there was no, there was no hesitation. Months later, the two were at Shands Hospital in Gainesville, where the successful kidney transplant took place. Well, thank you. She nominated him for the Getting Results Award. That's very cool. Thank is you. It? Yeah, it's awesome. Technology may have brought them together. The brown one is camo, uh, gin gin, and but dollar. Pentecost is most thankful she can get back. Come on, guys. To the simple thing. I just felt so tired all the time, and uh, no mm -hmm. get up and go. But my get up and go has gotten up and go going <laughs> now. Yeah, it's okay. How do you thank someone that gave you your life back? No more. I can do anything I want. Life is good now, thanks to Art. Wow. I, Matt Austin and Paul Giorgio, who work together on those stories, just put together the most beautiful stories. They are. That was just mm -hmm. incredible. And Pentecost wants to get the word out. More than 100,000 people in the U.S. are waiting for life-saving and life-changing organ and tissue donation. And if you'd like to know more on how you can help, you can find the web version of this story at clickorlando.com. Talk about acts of kindness, you know, in this story. There you have it. Yes. Why not? Yeah. What a great guy. Yeah. Well, this just in, we have breaking news. It's good breaking news. Happy pub date to pass along. You got that right. Yeah. Yesterday, the Flagler County Sheriff's Office stopped by New 6 at 9 <laughs> with their new bloodhound puppy, their first one in years. We are all in love, and now yes. that dog has a name. We have selected a name. He's going to be named after Sherlock Holmes. We have selected Holmes because he is going to bring missing people home. Oh, oh, it's not right. Dumbo? I, I like Dumbo. I wanted Bo. Well, he's perfect. <laughs> yeah. He is perfect. Look at him. Holmes the Hound <laughs> named after, as you heard, Sherlock Holmes. And he was already <laughs> busy at work while he was here. He was walking mm -hmm. down the hall, sniffing. Tr sniffing and tracking. So he is going to do incredible work. Yeah. Can't wait for more updates. Can they Puppies? please put a little <laughs> magnifying glass under his eye? Oh, Wouldn't we'll that be see. cute? Yeah. Yeah. We'll Maybe for Halloween. Halloween, yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's take a live look outside now from our beach cam. A gloomy Friday out there at the beach. Doesn't look like a whole lot of folks out there, but you know. We'll salvage the weekend, yes, though. We That's the good news. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. unfortunately, lots of bad weather news around the world this week, Candace. Oh, yeah, it's been rough. We've seen several powerful storms sweep through the south the past few weeks. And yesterday, check this out, an EF3 tornado directly hit Ruston, Louisiana, with winds of more than 136 miles per hour. You can see here, trees were uprooted, power lines were down, were down homes completely destroyed. And unfortunately, a mother and son were killed when one of those trees fell on their home. And this is a drone images of all that damage from parts of um, the Gulf Coast states. You can see here a hotel had the roof completely ripped off. I mean, we're talking about all the rooms being exposed, damage to scoreboards, uh, stores, roofs, awnings, shopping centers. Now, this storm, though, will continue to move east, kicking up some rain, high winds for Georgia, Alabama, and yes, even here in Florida. But good news is we aren't expecting this kind of severe weather as the front moves through central Florida, but we will continue to see some some rain today. I'll get to that in just a few seconds. But that rain did not delay the New Orleans Jazz Festival. It's a big popular festival. Uh, it just kind of delayed about 90 minutes. Look at this. This is time lapse video showing the storm rolling in. But the good news is, despite uh, you know the thinner clouds out there, the thinner than usual crowds, not clouds, crowds. But when it finally got going, people had a fantastic time. You can see there, rain ain't stopping them, right? <laughs> 
All right, that is your weather around the world. Now let's pinpoint Central Florida a little closer home. And that front is bringing us uh, that gloomy kind of rainy day. No lightning to report just yet. We are though still seeing some moderate rain, some pockets of heavy rain now falling just west of our viewing area. That will all continue to track east and south over the next few hours. Oh, Callie, you're dealing with some moderate rain up through Fellowship along 27 and 75. Also seeing some moderate rain. You can see here rain rates about an inch per hour in parts of Zellwood, Apopka, Paradise Heights, out through Ocoee and Oakland, and as far as south as Gotha, and all this again will continue to go south and east. The New Smyrna Beach, Oak Hill, up and down 95, out in Volusia and Brevard County, also seeing some light, kind of that misty light showers, uh, just enough for you to use your windshield wipers and to kind of slick those roads out there. So really, please take it easy out there. Down I-4 through Altima, we have a lot of uh, construction areas here. So again, take it easy, take it slow, uh, because this off and on rain will continue throughout the day. But parts of uh, Osceola County and Brevard, you are still looking mostly dry, with the exception of northern Brevard County, Titusville, through Port St. John, and now through Merritt Island, some light to moderate rain. All right, and as we take you here, Mount Dora to Melbourne, both locations have big events going on this weekend. We had that Blueberry Festival in Mount Dora. We have a big art festival in Melbourne. For today, though, thankfully... The rain will be pushing out by the evening hours. Early rain for Mount Dora, late rain for Melbourne, all depending on where your location is. Now let's check on your personalized pinpoint weather forecast. We also have a big event, the Leesburg Bike Festival. It starts today later on this afternoon. We do have that chance of rain and storms, but look at Saturday and Sunday looking fantastic. Sunday, though, it will be getting hot fast. If you have a special event or day you'd like me to pinpoint for, send us your photos or videos with your city, your date, name, why it's a special occasion, just head on over to clickorlando.com slash personalized pinpoint to submit them. And it is going to get hot fast no matter where you are in Central Florida. 89 degrees by Sunday, but hey, at least it will be dry. We'll get that rain out of here just in time for the weekend. Good I cool like day. It, right? If you think strange crimes tend to happen in Florida, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And every Friday we make a guessing game out of it. Yes, it's a tough one too. There are lots of people who get excited about Olive Garden. So <laughs> at one restaurant, a very unappetizing scene. We'll tell you why a hungry customer ended up in handcuffs coming up. Get my breadsticks. Mm -mm -mm. You're Sounds watching good. News 6. Getting results will be right back. Your personalized pinpoint weather is brought to you by J.A. Edwards of America, your roofing specialist. Dot com. Hi, I'm Mike Holfeld. Coming up at 5, listen to this. A single mom goes shopping at Walmart, pays for the items, goes outside, and the police are waiting for her. You are hereby ordered to leave the above described premises immediately. Management said she was shoplifting, but did they get it right? I do not shoplift. You decide tonight at 5. Mm -mm. Interesting. Yeah, well, I'm going to we... watch that one. Yeah, yeah. it is. Very interesting. You know, it's time for that recipe, and we like things that are easy on Fridays. That's right. Mm -hmm. So tonight we are getting results for dinner with a Cobb salad. Oh, that sounds refreshing, that. doesn't it? The Mama mm. Loves Food blog says it's a great option because you, you know, have the protein and the veggies all mixed into one. You can find the full recipe on clickorlando.com under the food section. That looks good. Can't beat a yeah. Cobb salad. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Well, it's time for our little Friday game show on News 6 and 9 where we talk about some of the weird crime stories from the week. There is always something wild going on, and that is why we have our Strange Florida newsletter. So to help us out, Trooper Steve and Brianna Bowles from ClickOrlando.com are joining us today. Well, you guys know the rules. We'll mm -hmm. each tell you a story, and you ladies tell us if it happened here or anywhere else in the world. All right. right. You ready? Feeling lucky. Are you? Yeah. Okay, we'll see. I really <laughs> love pasta, but I never really thought it could get me arrested. But 32-year-old mm. Ben oh. Paget found out it can if you're sitting topless outside of Olive Garden shoving spaghetti in your mouth with your hands. I mean, okay. yeah. It's probably not a good idea to harass people and threaten to attack them while you're doing that. Deputies were called and Paget was arrested. <laughs> they do say he smelled of alcohol. Yep, that'll do it. Sounds Surprise. like a Saturday. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Joking, I'm joking. Okay, Candace, where was it? <laughs> Florida or anywhere else? Mm. Um, first of all, I think he has great hair, and I think it was somewhere <laughs> else. Maybe somewhere else. I say Florida. Well, people in Florida can't have great hair because of this humidity, but that guy did. It happened in Collier County. Yeah. Yeah. Luminous. <laughs> all right, this is a PSA, but guys, if you're trying to impress a woman with a song, maybe make sure it's the PG version. Oh, no, get 62 year old Robert Mirabella oh, Robert. found out. Yeah, Robert, right? Oh, Robert. <laughs> found out the hard way. He was arrested after playing guitar and singing an original song to a woman, but the problem was he was sitting on her porch and calling her some names I'm not going to even repeat mm. here on 
Do it. No. <laughs> he was arrested for disorderly conduct. Maribel says he sang the song in front of her, but didn't mean it was about her. Oh. What? Maybe next time stick to the classics, man. Yeah. So, did it happen here or anywhere else? Oh, I'll say Florida. Florida? Anywhere else? Yeah, well, it happened in the villages. Oh. Give me the boom box. <laughs> I can't right. today. This is a mess. <laughs> All right. We've reported on Burger King thefts before, but in this case, it wasn't the food or money this guy was after. It was the cooking grease. Hundreds of gallons of used cooking grease, to be Whoa. exact. But he couldn't give police the slip. You see what I did there? <laughs> anyway, police say thank you. Alvaro Mendez Flores backed up a box truck to a grease dumpster and used a hose to siphon the oil in a 1,600-gallon tank. It turns out it's because it can be used to make biodiesel fuel, and grease thefts have risen. But it's also <laughs> very illegal. So, of course, he was arrested. Or was it? Somewhere Florida. else. Florida. Uh, somewhere else. Well, it was. It was somewhere else. Yep, somewhere else. Not here. Not here. Northern, Northern Virginia. Virginia. All, right. All right. Thanks, guys. I won. Three for three. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> you did. Good job. <laughs> Thanks for joining us this morning on News 6 at 9. More what news and weather at noon.